want to talk about real estate because real estate is a niche, is a vertical that there is tons of demand. I am here in Miami, Florida. You can shake a tree and you can find 30 real estate agents within a 0.0001 mile radius. It's a very, very big, very popular industry here in Miami, South Florida in general. I mean, real estate here has gone through the roof. It's now officially the most expensive state to live in. So cheers to that. Y'all think y'all are dealing with inflation coming to South Florida. Let me show you a whole different animal here. Anyways, real estate. A lot of people want to work with it because they say exactly what I just said. I want to focus on working with real estate because there's a lot of real estate people. There's a lot of real estate demand. People are always going to buy houses. That's cool. That's one of the criteria that I would push you to look at in terms of the demand for that service, for that industry, et cetera. But the big question that you need to answer is, does the result of my service for real estate agents and brokerages result in more houses sold, result in more leads? And when it comes to SEO, the answer to that is a resounding no. <laughs> I have worked with real estate clients. I have coached dozens of agencies. And a lot of people are taking what I have here, this traditional SEO strategy, which is try and rank a real estate agent or brokerages site. You know, like let's say I own, my wife actually has a real estate license. She does some commercial stuff. So let's say she has a, you know, an agent, a real estate agent brokerages, whatever. She's here in Miami. She wants to focus on selling commercial or even residential real estate. So the process that a lot of people follow is they say, okay, well, first of all, we need to get the property listings on your website. So you go through this whole pain in the ass process to get the MLS on somebody's website. Cool. That's great. Now they're going to rank, right? Absolutely not. Why? Well, because any sort of real estate search that you look for, you're dominated by Zillow, Realtor, Redfin, homes.apartments.com, homes.com, you name it, you're completely beaten out by authority. So what a lot of agencies have tried to do is take a backdoor way into track. When I say backdoor, I mean like content marketing. I mean, looking at things like trying to rank for zip code, right? I'll show you that in a second. Trying to rank for things like neighborhood, right? Okay. So like if we can't rank for Miami homes for sale, maybe we can rank by neighborhood. So what I want to do is go through these searches and just show you the actual SERPs, right? Because something that I look at all the time is the actual SERPs within Google to understand and dictate if this is a good vertical that we want to attack, right? So actually, let me cover this problem here too. The other problem that I want to talk about here too, is that I actually invest in real estate. So I'm kind of hyper into this industry and this space from a consumer side. And I always look at my agency from the eyes of the consumer, right? Not how is the real estate agents and brokerage clients looking at my agency, but how are their potential clients looking and finding them? Because that's the problem that we need to solve for. A lot of us are focused on the demand for our services when we really need to be looking at the demand profit, viability, economics of our clients and their services, right? So a lot of what's happening now is a lot of consumers are just going directly to Redfin, Zillow, Realtor, what have you, because you can save homes, you can contact real estate agents through there. It's a platform, right? They're bypassing Google in general. So the demand is kind of waning and going around for any of those types of searches. So what I want to do is I want to take some of these searches. Let's look at Fort Lauderdale. Again, I'm in South Florida here. Fort Lauderdale is another huge market here. So this is how a lot of you should be, because this is really what I do, is I look at a keyword based analysis for what we're looking at here. So this would be a big keyword here, right? This is getting searched for 1800 times per month. Pretty good search term, right? So let's look at what's happening in search, because when we look at what's happening in search, we can understand and back out a lot of strategies. So what's the first thing that we see? Pay-per-click ad. Second thing, pay-per-click ad. Third, first organic listing, Zillow, Realtor. People also ask Trulia, Redfin, Movoto, Coldwell Banker, Homes.com, Remax, Rocket Homes, Century 21. There is not a single local or small business that you would partner with. Look, if you're going to go out there and partner with a Realtor or Homes.com, you can just jump off this right now because this is for you, but you're probably not going to because they have their own internal teams. And if they're looking for support, it's probably around the link building or content marketing side, right? So what does this tell me? This tells me no matter how many links you build, no matter how much content you do, no matter how much SEO you do, you are never going to make a client money for this. If you are working with a Fort Lauderdale based, South Florida based realtor brokerage, they will never make money off of this search, right? And this is probably what they're coming to you wanting to rank for. But they don't know a lot of this because this isn't really what they do, right? And we'll come back to the cost per click after this. Okay. Well, Ryan, what about rentals? Let's take a look at rentals. Let's see what else we can get. More ads, sponsored listing, apartments.com, part thing. Own the all three stirps above the fold is owned by apartments.com, Zillow, Trulia, Realtor, Rent Cafe, For Rent, Apartment Guide, Rent.com, Apartment Finder. You're starting to see the pattern here, right? There's not a single opportunity for you to get visibility for a client here. Okay. Now, what if we look at Las Olas? Las Olas is a neighborhood, right? A neighborhood of Fort Lauderdale. Las Olas is one of the main strips in downtown Fort Lauderdale. What do we see? Now we see ads coming from condo buildings, right? So again, they're not working with agents. They're just going direct to consumer, selling them here. This is actually the first time that we've seen two actual individual, you know, agents, brokerages here in Fort Lauderdale that are actually getting visibility, but they're paying for that with AdWords here. 
right? So he's basically, and again, from a consumer point of view, like I, I don't really fully understand this because I can just go to Zillow and see all this stuff. This is kind of what blows my mind too. And part of what we'll talk about is you flipping the script and helping your clients understand that they can spend all the money in the world that they want on this, but it doesn't matter <laughs> because consumers are not going to use this no matter how hard you try, no matter how much traffic gets to your website, people are still going to use real realtor. They have accounts there. Like I, again, it's just makes no sense for me here. So this is what this is. It's really kind of a waste of money sending them to this landing page. I know we'll talk more about in a second. Property Shark, Zillow, Zillow, Zillow. Here's the first one that we see here. That's a true organic listing. But look at how far down the fold is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So basically bottom of page one, we get our first actual listing from organic. That would be from like a client that you'd probably be partnering with or working with. A realtor based in South Florida, based in Fort Lauderdale. Okay, cool. That's also a very small search, 260.65 click click. Okay, well, what about zip code, right? Maybe if we drill them by zip code, we can backdoor some more traffic. Let's take a look at that. Well, we get more ads, apartments.com, Zillow, Trulio, Realtor, again, hot pads. We're not getting much here, right? So what I'm trying to get to is that all of these searches here, right, which would be the conversion intent, high impact, potential lead, potential money-making keywords for a client are just kind of wiped out unless you're doing paid search, which we'll talk about in a second. Now let's take a look at this one. What about Fort Lauderdale real estate agents? Let's take a look at this right here. What do we got? Wow, this is interesting. Now we've got local service ads here that are tied directly to a person. That's interesting. And not a ton of reviews, which tells me that there's not a ton of competition here for this. That's a really big plus for us here. We go down, there's two ads here, best agents, top agents. And wow, look at this. Now we've got a true organic maps pack right here, right? So two local placements here, right? And this kind of leads me into my big hit pitch for you here. When it comes to doing real estate SEO, right? What you can try and do is you can try and jam a massive square peg into a tiny round hole, taking people's money and constantly charging less and less and less trying to rank for these keywords, knowing damn well, you're never going to get there, knowing damn well, it's just going to create headaches with the clients, knowing damn well, they're going to turn out, knowing damn well, you're going to spend all your time and energy trying to figure it out and you can't figure it out. You can't beat it. You cannot fight city hall. Google is telling us exactly what they want to do here. What we need to do and what I want to push on top of you, not just for real estate, but for any vertical you're trying to work with is understanding what Google gives us, right? Understanding the opportunities that Google gives us. Now, the reason why this is also so important, why why does this map? Why is this so important? And why is this so important? Because there are no brands. Obviously, you can have some local brands if you're, you know, a if you've got like a big brokerage that's national. Yeah, they can rank in here. But like Realtor, Zillow, all those different types of businesses will never be in here, right? Even when we scroll down here, they're below the fold. What does that tell us? That tells us that people are actually looking for people with this searches. And why does that matter? Because this is a high intent, high conversion based keyword. If somebody's looking for a local based realtor, they want to call you, they want to talk to you, they want to potentially hire you, right? So so the point I'm trying to make here is that whenever you're going through whatever vertical you're looking at, you need to go through this process. You need to understand how people are potentially fine. And I'm not talking about, because if you just do traditional keyword research in here, you're like, oh, there's a big keyword, high cost per click, high competition. A lot of us are looking at like the keyword difficulty here and be like, okay, like that's that's not too bad. I can, I can, I can do 52%. I've, I've ranked it more competitive before, but it doesn't matter what this says. This is a third party tool. You're never going to beat this. You're never going to, you're never, never, never going to beat what Google is telling us here. So the big strategy, the big reveal here is to do a local SEO campaign tied in with local Ads, local LSAs. The reason why this is so impactful, again, is because this is one of the few opportunities that we actually have to get visibility for keyword searches that you're not competing against brands with. So this is kind of like, and the reason why I figured this out too, in all fairness, was because we're working with a client who came to us to run his pay-per-click ads. And when he came to us, he was like, yeah, I'm running LSAs in 10 different markets and it's going really well. I was like, what do you mean you're running LSAs? He's like, yeah, local service ads. You never run them? I'm like, yeah, I've run them before, but not for real estate. I was like, and then I went and I typed in like Fort Lauderdale homes for sale, right? Because this technically is a local search, but because it's not tied to a local business, you're, it's, you're not getting local maps pack stuff here. So what he's been doing with a ton of success is he's been opening up satellite offices. He's getting real, he's a real estate agent. So he just goes and he leases, you know, in Fort Myers, which costs him 400 bucks a month in office space. He gets it verified. And now he has an opportunity to get LSA set up in that region and also to rank organically in that region, right? When we look at this, just looking at the number of views here, I work in personal injury. So sometimes you'll see 200, 400, 1,000 reviews. It's really tough to move those people out. But 43 reviews sitting in a, one of the most competitive real estate markets in the country with some of the most high value real estate, this is money in the bank, right? If you can rank them here, they are going to get phone calls. They are going to get leads. They're going to be incredibly happy with you. And this is not a huge effort. To rank somebody here and to set up these LSAs is one tenth, 10% of the time and energy that it would take to try and do the traditional, again, setting up all those properties on their website. That stuff doesn't matter, right? Like stuff doesn't matter because the way that the market has shifted, again, is it's moved 
move back to consumers having the power, like they can find their own properties, but they still can't get the property without an agent. And this guy was really smart because what he's doing is he knew this and he set up an offer. And this is something you work with your clients too. You see, he set up an offer that said, okay, you know, I can't really compete with these other brokers, but what I can compete on is the commission, right? So he's offering a flat fee, like lowest commission possible or lowest fee possible to buyers. So if you find him, you find one of his agents, their offer is you sign up with us, we can guarantee this is the lowest fee that you're gonna get. So he's crushing it by getting buyers in the door by running LSAs and then signing a new contract that gives them exclusive rights to either sell their home or buy their home. And the guy is now, again, like I said, got 10 locations across Texas and he's gonna start, just keep on replicating that. And he's basically printing leads and money. And he said the same thing. He's like, look, I tried to buy leads from Zillow. I tried to buy leads from all these different places, but they were garbage, they were tire kickers. But when we sign them to a person, right? Now we have the ability to really kind of get up at the neck and just, you know, they're doing a lot of the self-selecting themselves are actually coming to us with properties and being like, yo, like, I don't need the whole rigmarole. Like, I know the properties that I want, <laughs> you know, I'm able to find them myself. I don't need you to send me properties. I just want you to help me close. So like, here's a strategy that I would go with, right? Again, if you want to work with real estate, you want to win at the local level for agent based keywords. So anything that has real estate agent or maybe broker in times a local area, you want to do local SEO and you want to do LSAs, local service ads, if you don't know, super easy to set up. You don't need to add word certification or anything like that. It's it's really point and click. You basically just set them up as a real estate agent. You just boost it. It's kind of like a boosted post almost, but within Google. And then after that, if you exhaust this, or if you're looking for somebody who's really to hit scale, so this would be like offer one, primary offer here, offer one, offer two would be AdWords. So when we come back up here, right? This is really fun now. This is when it starts to get really strategic. This is what we call our blended search approach, right? So Fort Lauderdale real estate agents, you can see it's low volume, but high cost per click. This first of all tells me that it's a valuable keyword, right? And the fact that be able to bypass all those brands and get you right up here. These don't run on cost per click, by the way, these run on cost per call. So this cost per click data that we see here does not apply to this. You're not paying per click, you're paying per lead. You're probably paying like 20 to 30 bucks per lead here, right? Which is a lot less than you pay here. But we can say, okay, if, if we're really working with somebody who's looking to scale, right? And go from 40 leads to 100 leads to 400 leads, we're going to have to get all these keywords because this is not high volume enough, right? We can take a small real estate agent, do 2,500 bucks a month, and help them dominate their local market and get, you know, 20 to 30 good signed leads per month. But if they really want to scale, if they have 50, 100, 500 agents, they're going to have to go after these keywords. But what you can see here, 50 cents cost per click, right? The arbitrage on that keyword is nuts. So what I would do is I would do a blended search model. I would say for anything local, for any real estate based agent search, we're going to dominate. We're going to do local SEO. We're going to do local service ads. Then for brokers who really want to scale, what we're going to do is we're going to set up pay-per-click ad campaigns going after these more traditional keywords that are a low cost cost per click, we're going to set up a landing page, we're going to come up with a really good offer, and we're going to get them to sign and convert that way. So now you're able to get these keywords at like an entry price offer, you know, $2,500 to $5,000 per month, depending on the market, and then really hit a level of scale here by going after volume keywords that have a very low cost per click. And then the final piece that I would do here is just traditional content marketing to get traction for any long tail searches with higher intent. So I'm not talking about like neighborhood based searches like, you know, Fort Lauderdale homes or like Fort Lauderdale waterfront homes, because you're not going to beat those, right? Water front houses for sale. You'll also get a lot of tire kickers with these, right? So you'll still see the realtors and stuff here. And this is always a fail safe to make sure that you're targeting the right keywords. But what I would do is I would say, okay, of these neighborhoods that we want to target within the Fort Lauderdale area, what are the high intent, high quality searchers instead of tire kickers, right? Because what you see a lot of stuff with this is this because you'll also hit the head keyword and you get a lot of people that are just looking at pictures like, oh, this is so cool, right? Instead, what you want to be looking at would be like Fort Lauderdale neighborhoods with best schools. So now we come back here and we can start to see a little bit more listicles, right? Best neighborhoods for, for a lot of extra space storage. Like you can see that they're taking it, right? So there's definitely a lot of opportunity here. Lux Miami blog, Dave, this is a real estate one here, right? Best private schools, right? All these different keywords that are, again, if somebody is circling the drain from a search point of view, right? Like if I'm looking to buy a house, I'm looking for best schools, lowest crime, best neighborhoods, you know, like neighborhoods with cul-de-sacs, I don't know, stuff like that, right? And this says use data. And what I would, I would do is also would use data. So I put together like data-driven based posts. So if we go to like city data or something right here, you can probably scrape data from these platforms and put together like really good listicles, right? So like, and then you can do like a list called like top 10 safest neighborhoods in Fort Lauderdale and then internally link then to a new page that would be like, okay, Las Olas Boulevard, 33130. And then like all the data there about all their statistics, right? So now you're starting to build out all supporting content that you can bring people in with and really start to spread that map super wide. So that's my strategy. 
basis. So Kaylin asked, would you target queries like real estate agents for the first time home buyers? Yeah. I mean, so let's look at that, right? That to me would be much more of a modifier that probably wouldn't make much of a difference, especially when we're talking about like in Miami, right? What you're going to want to do is you're just going to take these keywords and see what happens. So you can see here that this is not triggering that local maps pack, right? I'm in Miami. So let's look at Miami, but there you go. Bang right here, right? So we've got LSAs and we've got the maps pack again here. So the first time home buyers doesn't really matter, but these are the other things that you can look at, right? Maybe luxury would trigger. Yep. Luxury triggers that too. That's a really good one. So you can just keep doing this to see all the, to just gather all the different keywords that these types of searches and queries are triggering for, for you to build that out. Steven asks, do you advise setting listings to no index on a client site? It's a good question, Steven. You know, like I actually want to look at Julie's realty here. I, I, she's somebody that I know crushes it. She's like a kind of a more of a solopreneur. I wonder, I don't do a lot of real estate SEO, like I said. So like, I'm not as in touch with like the actual structure of the websites and what they should have on it. So she has, it looks like she has all the the neighborhoods up here, or maybe she just has like choice ones here. What I would probably do, like, first of all, like the technical challenges and like the amount of information that's needed, I would probably build more like neighborhood based pages instead of like for rent or for sale, like neighborhood recommendation based pages. Cause like to put all this stuff on here, like you can see this is taking forever to load. Right. And I just know that like people are not using this. Like people aren't coming here unless they've already come to your website and they're like seeing what you have for sale. I would only put like exclusive listings on your website. Right. Which would be a reason for people to join and then two it would be like neighborhood recommendations and like i would do like long form guides for each neighborhood and you can think like neighborhood safeness like schools in the area like crime rates you know like mayor all the like city population all that different stuff right like permitting process stuff like that so people can use that to discover like okay i want to look at these neighborhoods but like having all this stuff up here like i said it just kind of creates it creates a lot of challenges in terms of managing it right because then you have to deal with like you said like no and do i want to no index what do I do when they churn out? Like what happens to those pages? Like it's just a lot, right? And like I said, people like this is a much worse experience than going to Redfin or a realtor, right? So like the thought that a lot of people put these on here, and I know this is the case because I do a lot of like free consults with real estate folks in Miami because they're like, like I said, they're, you shake a tree here and there's a million of them that fall out. They want help on this stuff and understandably so because people do use search engines overwhelmingly to try and find properties and, and this and that. But like this is a much, this is a subpar experience to Redfin and Zillow. Like I use Redfin because I have an account there. I have all my saved properties. I get email notifications. Like this to me is like working off the back end of the MLS, which means it's slower, right? Which means if I'm not getting the information at the realest time, why even have this stuff? And I know why, because real estate agents, like this is the thing. Like a lot of companies have made a lot of money selling this to real estate agents. They're like, yeah, well, you know, we'll build the MLS on your website so you can have it. But it's like, nobody's going there. And like, I know when you work with a real estate agent, for example, let's say they send you three homes. They're sending you the MLS listing URL. They're not sending you from their website which tells me that they're not even using it for their services. So like I would probably maybe not no index them completely, Stephen, but just advise them like you don't really need it. Like I would instead build a website that's all about realtors. Like I guess realty is good, like Julie's realty. So this is, seems to be targeted pretty well, but I would make all like the copy, all the language about servicing people, not selling properties that they're not like getting access to listings, right? So you can have your exclusive listings up there that only you own. You could have your neighborhood guides that would like break down what, like where you recommend people live for the type of clients that you want to track. Like if you're doing luxury, you shouldn't have, you know, she, she said she's doing luxury realtor, but like, this is not a luxury property, <laughs> right? So like, what's the point? I mean, like all this, like, it's just pointless. So that'd be my answer, Stephen. Like I just build a different type of strategy. And for all of you listening to like, these are the types of things that are going to help you stand out. Like when you come to somebody and everyone's pitching the same thing, they're like, yeah, like you need to have your listings and all this stuff. It's like, that costs a lot of time and money. It's like, that's not the answer. We can set up a three page website here. That's all about being a real estate agent in Miami. And we can rank you in the mouse pack and get ads up. And we get you leads by the end of this week for significantly less. So that's what I would say. Jonathan, asked, what is the typical radius needed for satellite locations? I know it probably depends on density, but what have been successful in your clients areas? Giving you the exact location is probably, I would just do it based on city, right? So like if we look at like South Florida and we look at a map, so if we look at South Florida here, right? Like I would do based on, and again, like your client should know this too. Like, for example, like Homestead is kind of the sticks down here. Like I wouldn't recommend Homestead for and the, uh, most realtors probably like, I don't want to work there either. But like when you just look at like pure size, Hialeah, overall Miami, Doral's a big one, 
Coral Gables is a big one, Hollywood, Florida. Like it just depends how far up they want to go. Also too, because it depends, they're going to have to go do showings in person. It's all going to depend based on kind of like area location, how far they're willing to drive, et cetera. But that would be something that I would just work out direct with your client. So I would like have a list of questions for them. Like how far are you willing to drive? Cause South Florida, the traffic's nuts. <laughs> like it's nuts. I wouldn't advise someone to be in Miami and like go up to Hollywood. That's like an hour and a half in traffic every day. So it should be based on first of all, where they're willing to commute to. And then second of all, based on like home prices, home value, population density, et cetera. Benji asked, how do you price your paid ads offer? Interested to see how your fee changes between running LSAs and other Google ads products. Great question, Benji. So our pay-per-click ads, if we're doing traditional pay-per-click, right? So if we just go like Miami real estate for sale for us to run these, it's 2,500 flat per month. This is for law firms, 2,500 flat per month. And that's for all inclusive. That's for all inclusive ad management. If we're doing LSAs, we actually do these for free only if they sign up for SEO. So we have this like package where it's like, okay, our goal is to rank you here, but oh, by the way, we'll get you phone calls in the first week by setting up LSAs. So the reason why I don't push LSAs is because they're very hit or miss. It's a very new product from Google and we don't charge for it because it doesn't take a lot of energy to set this up. It's literally like two click setup. So we actually do LSAs for free if they sign up for SEO. Steven asked, what are some strategies would you recommend for commercial or manufacturing real estate? Commercial real estate would probably be the same. I'm not sure about manufacturing real estate. I would probably put that as a subset of commercial. So like if we just did like Miami commercial real estate agents near me, it looks like we're still getting that here. So it look, actually looks like there's a lot less competition. I do know also because my wife is commercial. Commercial is a lot less service than residential just for a lot of reasons, but mainly because commercial takes a little bit of a different process to sell it. And you kind of have to be in with a brokerage before you break out on your own. There's also like a lot more off market deals and commercial, et cetera. So Aaron asked, what's a successful case study of SEO leads in the real estate category? What were some possibilities from a metrics perspective? So it's all the same, Aaron. Good question, right? Like, first of all, if you haven't checked out our traffic projection tool, check that out. Just Google SEO traffic projection tool. You'll find it. But we use that. Basically, all we're looking at is we're looking at it and saying, what's the search demand in this market times an expected conversion rate? It's pretty straightforward, right? So like when you work in a space in an industry, you'll be able to dial in a lot easier and better. Like I know in law for every 1000 searches per month, you know, we can probably get if everything's like working properly, we can get 300 visits. Those 300 visits would probably turn into like five phone calls, call it right. So we kind of know the math from working there. You just, I don't really work that much with real estate. This is just a strategy that I want to pass on to you guys, but this would be something that with experience. And this is why I talk about so much inside the program, right? Like it's so important to dive deep into these and get context on these industries. Like a lot of you guys, when I do consults with you, you're like, yeah, I think I want to do this because of this. And it's like, okay, cool. How long have you been here for? Like seven years. Okay. Like tell me the nuance, like what's the nuances that you can apply? that you know to this industry. So the math is simple, Aaron, right? It's really just demand times expect conversions. Now, of course, expected conversion rate is going to be determined based on industry and market. And that just comes from experience. So in the beginning, you know, you can just kind of use standard conversion rates, standard projection metrics in order to do that. But like, for example, when I send a proposal to a law firm, it like, like, let's say they're only in Fort Lauderdale, right? I usually tell them that for every local market that they pay us for, right? They can expect 20 to 40 phone calls per month within three to six months is usually what I tell them. And that's based on experience. Steven asked, real estate is more development, private neighborhood based in Mexico. Do you have any, I, I don't have anything outside of the state, Steven, I apologize. I don't, I'm not really familiar with that process or development based stuff. I would imagine it's probably a little bit more pre-construction. So like in the States, it's much more pre-construction based, which means, you know, they're selling based on future stuff as opposed to existing, but it's kind of the same process, right? Like if you're an agent working with somebody, right? We're selling Selling them at the agent level, not at the property level. So the agent can then make those recommendations to buy, walking them through pre-construction versus new builds versus development spaces versus et cetera. Martin asks, what's the best way to get started in real estate niche if you're new to this market? It's a good question, Martin. I would say the best thing for me is always, like I wanna say get your first client and then just kind of work with them, but getting your first client is what I'm trying to answer for you. So like for me, if you're really interested in doing this, I would just go to somebody for free and be like, hey, look at, you know, my name's Martin. I've got 10 years of experience doing SEO. I've got some really good strategies I'd love to share with you. And by the way, like I'm kind of new to this space, so I'm happy to do it for you for 10%, just like cover the hard costs, something like that. If you send 20 of those emails or messages on Instagram, like you're going to get one, that's like, okay. And then once you get one, then that's, that's your baby. You just treat that like your own. Steven asked, what backlinks would you recommend? Same thing as always, you know, we just use vendors to get backlinks for the most part. We're not doing anything crazy. Single property websites, Steven, I'll just answer this one too, would be 
be that would be at the developer level, not at the agent level. So I probably wouldn't touch that. That would probably be like a pre-construction project. That wouldn't be an SEO play. That would be much more of like a social old school sales networking. Also, you're going to want to get other agents involved to make sure that they are present and involved. Digital Harvest asks for targeting location plus real estate agent keywords. Would you say that loading up trust-based content is pretty important, aka testimonials, more video, brand content, thinking is pretty important. Okay, good question. So the answer I have to this is no, because when we take one of our core searches here, this is what people are saying. <laughs> so like reviews in Google, 100%, absolutely 1000%. Reviews are going to be the most important thing. But like for the most part, like this is a click to call situation. This is how I feel about all this stuff. Like testimonials are cool. They, they definitely don't hurt, but like they are not as important of a marketing tool as people think, right? Like content's great, but like in this exact instance, right? Like something I talk about a lot inside of our Blueprint Grow program is like your job is to get them conversions right? Like all that other stuff is fun. It's cute. But like, if it's not driving towards the main thing, it should not be the main thing. You shouldn't spend time doing it. This is the fastest, easiest way to get them leads. That's all they care about. So if you can bypass that, right? Like, that's great. Like, I'm not going to tell people, like I tell my lawyer clients all the time, like, if you want to create video, create video. Cool. That's great. But I don't need it to get you more phone calls. If you want to go on TikTok and create video, please do it. I highly encourage you. It's only going to help you, but it's not going to help me get you more leads because the consumer does not care in this instance. The consumer is getting this. <laughs> These are their options, right? So they're getting these options. They search for it. They click, they call, and then it's up to them, right? It's a sales process. It's a conversation process. So your job is pretty much done. And that's why I recommend this. And that's why like, I'm glad you all are here because these are the type of strategies that I want to push on you all, because it's about the main thing. It's about making the money. And like, if it doesn't make the money, then why are we doing it? Why are we going to spend our time doing something that doesn't make them more money? Todd, we use Loganics for backlink vendors. They're actually inside of our program. You can hit them up inside of Slack. GBP for local is competitive for real estate. What do you do to beat other GBP profiles? Have you experimented with click through rate manipulation and maps results, simulating calls, clicks, and driving directions. I have not, I don't get down any of that stuff, man. That's all bullshit. We don't teach that. I don't coach that. It's just nonsense. <laughs> and also too, like, I'm just getting like, my opinion on all that is that if I hire a company and they're doing that to my business, I will show up to you and I will fight you because like, you're potentially harming my business. It's just like bottom of the bucket stuff. I'm not picking on you. You don't have a name. You're anonymous here anyway. So I'm not picking on you. I understand what people talk about online, but here's what matters for GBP reviews, real reviews active reviews. <laughs> That's by far and away the most important. Two is going to be getting the profile active, right? So like Q&A, let me see if anyone here has any stuff here, you know, filling everything out here. Let's check out one. That's probably more, a little bit more filled out. So they don't like updates. These are all good, right? Like just listed, like this is all great. This is why this guy's one of the reasons why this guy's probably ranking first, right? So just do like the good thing about GBPY, like it so much is that like, it's not rocket science here, right? Like we don't have to like go above and beyond and do anything crazy. Like you just follow the process and then you do the traditional SEO stuff. So the other big thing will be like on website authority. And actually Tony just mentioned this too. In the next one, Tony actually does real estate SEO. So I'm glad he chimed in. So I'm just going to read Tony's response here. Someone asked about listings being indexed. Yes, they should. Not allowing indexing would be like selling blinders, blenders, but not actually allowing Google to crawl and index the product pages, listings add important context. So just tying that into the previous comment, right? Like the context of the website is going to help you to build up. Like Google wants to see that you're a real active business, like for law firms, for example, right? Like we have a checklist of pages that they have to have on their website, practice area pages, location pages, supporting blog content that supports their actual practice area and demonstrates subject matter expertise. So to Tony's point, and I would default to Tony here because Tony does this stuff nonstop. That's giving Google the supporting context and information to showcase that this is a real active website. So going back to Stephen's question, right, in terms of no indexing these pages, the answer to that is now no, do not no index those pages, keep them on for supporting content. However, you know, Tony will probably debate me on this, but I still stand by the fact that like, they're not helpful to me to like a consumer, they're not helpful pages. Like I bought multiple properties now I've looked at probably 20,000 properties and deals over the last 10 years. And like, I don't use them because I also know as a consumer that like, they're not the most up to date. They're probably delayed. They're slow. Like they don't have all the pictures. They usually don't have all the context. They're usually just pulling from the MLS anyway. So, you know, if I think if the client has, and that's great, they're not hurting the website, right? Like, but I just wouldn't focus on them from an SEO strategy. And again, Tony does this stuff all the time. So he'll probably debate me on that, but that would just be my opinion on it. Steven asks, I recall you mentioning a local guide type of website to generate real estate leads in an old WordPress article. Have you mentioned this strategy? Yeah, it's still on my YouTube channel. You can probably find it. That was what I was talking about basically down here with the strategy in terms of content, right? Like traditional content marketing to get traction for long tail searches with high intent. And when I say high intent, I don't mean like buy a house now. I mean, like from a customer's point of view, when they're starting that process in terms
terms of like, where should I live? That's kind of like the first question a real estate person asks when they're getting ready to buy something or move somewhere is like, where? Location. So if you, instead of being like real estate in Midtown Miami, real estate in Florida, it would be one step before that, which would be schools, crime rate, policies, politics. You know, like for me, I was actually looking at like code and stuff like that for, for renovations because we renovate homes. So like, what does that process look like? Like, is it a pain in the ass to get permits approved? Like all that type of information to me allows you to then go up and circumvent the realtors and the stuff. Do you use vendors to outsource local SEO work, Josh? We do not. We have an in-house gentleman that we hired off of Upwork. He's overseas, but he works for us full time. Benji asked for attorneys, are the practice area pages targeted to keywords like Atlanta personal injury or no? Yes, absolutely. All practice area pages are tied to a practice area plus location. And if they have multiple locations, then we set up multiple practice area pages for multiple locations, plus a locations page. That's like a splash page that lists out all of their locations. So that, are there any more questions? If not, this was a lot of fun. And for all of you, again, watching on Facebook, appreciate you tuning in. And if you want to get access to ask questions in real time, just make sure to join our Blueprint Build program. And if you have any questions, you can just drop a comment here and someone from our team will reach out with a link. And again, I appreciate all of you and I'll give you the rest of your day back. Have a great day. Take care, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.